Cool. Cheers. Okay, so before we get started, so as a club, we're trying to push uh, this thing called easy fundraising. So how it works is it's just like a extension to your uh, web browser, um, and they give us like free donations, so it doesn't cost you a penny. So, um, so anything what you just buy um, online, so any so these there's selected retailers which offer it. Um, and yeah, they just give us like a small donation depending on on how much you spend. Um, and so we'll send out the link to that on the Facebook page later on. Um, so yeah, if you guys could put that on your browser, that would be much appreciated. So as you can see, there's loads of different brands. Uh, they all offer sort of different amounts, different percentages of the amount where you spend. Uh, and yeah, like I say, it doesn't cost you a penny. Uh, and so far, we've actually managed to raise £232. Um, that, so that's just like the committee members uh, who have been sort of trialling it over uh, the summer period. Um, so yeah, as you can see, like it's, it's a pretty considerable amount. Um, so yeah, we, uh, I think Barney is going to send out the link to that on the Facebook page. So uh, keep your eyes peeled. Uh, so on to the actual lesson. So module content. So what we're going to be running through today. So um, extended the range of diving equipment. So we're going to be talking about shot lines, SMBs, DSMBs, the additional service aids, uh, distance lines, compasses, and dive torches. First things first, what is a shot line? So a shot line connects the surface to an underwater datum point. Uh, so as you can see in the picture, so you, you, you've probably seen this before. Um, there's a few scattered around at Stony Cove. There's one that attaches down to the stain garth and one that attaches down to uh, the hydro box, I believe. Um, yeah, they just connect the surface to the dive site to make it a little bit easier. It's, yeah, boy line and then a way to the bottom or it can be attached to the site. So why do we use a short line? It is the shortest route to and from the surface. So it removes that element of trying to search for the site when you go down there. Um, and then also when you're trying to come up, it brings you back to your boat location. So that's always, see? Uh, so it's more comfortable and secure. So doing midwater dis uh, ascents or descents uh, is not always sort of the best thing to do. Um, it's quite hard to control your depth uh, and then your buoyancy. So having a fixed visual reference with this line, what you're following up or down, it can help. And also with deep dives when there's limited visibility, uh, it can help with. Uh, and they're also used when making decompression stops. So with sports divers, you're going to be introduced to this sort of decompression stops. Um, which in a few in a few lectures time, and uh, I'll come onto this in the next slide. Then for your surface cover, it's also the marked entry point and the exit point. So your surface cover know where you're going up and going down. So shot lines for decompression. Uh, so there's a few configurations what you can run. Uh, you can have backup deco cylinders. So when you start doing deco dives, you should still be going down with the gear, what you need, like what you require for the dive. But then using a shot line, you can have this sort of backup or emergency system in case anything did go wrong. There's a few ways of doing that. Uh, so the first one is a shot line, which is sort of a separate line on the shot line. Um, so yeah, extra line to the main shot. Uh, and it's separate, so then you have, if, if you're diving like as a large group, then you avoid that sort of congestion, trying to go all trying to go up or tr all trying to go down at the same time. Uh, and then yeah, the boy can support a spare cylinder, so that yeah, I'd like to see a different gas mixes or just standard gas. Uh, and then they can also be connect uh, disconnected. So as you can see on the picture, there's a little clip. So if you need to. 
uh, if there's like a current where it's quite uncomfortable to to be hanging onto this line, you can simply just disconnect it and just just drift with the the current. Um, obviously, if you're doing that, then you need to have sort of a diver logging system whereby the last pair knows that they're the last pair diving, so then you don't release the clip and leave people behind. Um, because then it makes it a hassle for the boat trying to pick everyone up at the end. And it's just unnecessarily dangerous, I guess. Uh, so the last sort of method, you can have a decompression trapeze, uh, which looks a bit fancy. So it's, it's just two separate lines with like these solid bars, what hold them together. Uh, they're usually placed at nine meters and six meters. So that's our typical sort of deco stop depth. Uh, and they all require return to shot line. Um, so at the end of the dive, if you're having to do a deco stop, you need to remember to come back to the, the, the shot line. You can't like drift away and then, you know, come up and come up somewhere else because that emergency, that backup is not going to be there. The next up is surfer marks, surfer, surface marker boys, SMBs. There's two types, so you can have um, the SMBs, which is a permanent indication of a diver's position, of position. Or you can have a DSMB, which is where you inflate it underwater. So there's a few different reasons why we use each one, which I'll go through. Uh, and there's a few different methods of deployment. And then the use and precautions of these. So the SMB, diving a bit more into it. So it's a highly visible surface flow generally inflatable so it can be packed down uh, it can be in various different shapes so you can have round or cylindrical uh, so there's a round one um, they support about 10 to 20 kg so this is because uh, then they can't be pulled underwater so when you're under you know you can't tug it down because if you're able to tug it down then that's not going to be much use for the surface cover if they can't follow the S uh, so the amount of line, how much line? So as a general rule of thumb, we accept uh, 1.25 times however deep you're going. Um, so this is to allow for the currents and the surface winds. So if the line is getting pulled, then it's not going to take you with it. You've, you've got a bit of extra line to release. Uh, and then it comes, so you've got your SMB, you attach a reel onto it, which provides safe storage of the line. And it also allows you to make the adjustments of the line length to however you need. And it's also got this lock off mechanism. Um, so if you're sort of on a flat surface, then you can lock it and it doesn't like keep extending out more real and more real. And it, so all SMBs, they must have a quick release attachment to the diver. So this is because if you're losing your buoyancy, if it's getting like dragged along, uh, if it gets caught on something, you know, anything, we need to be able to ditch it so then it doesn't just drag us up. So yeah, that's the quicker release attachment. That will be attached to all SMBs. Uh, so the deployment of SMBs. So the entry, so it's either carried or passed onto the diver after entry. So you inflate it sort of on, on the boat, on the surface, jump in, and then sort of grab it off uh, whoever's keeping it or, um, yeah, carried. Uh, so with the descent, so you're just reading it out at the rate of descent, you know, you're not having loads of excess line, just, just flying about. But it's also important not to forget about your equalization. Because obviously you don't want to, wait too long because you're concentrating on trying to get this reel out and then your ears just can't equalize. When we're descending, you hold it away from the body. Uh, so then it avoids uh, snagging on your gear, just, uh, like entanglement, etc. And then your body positioning is also really important. Uh, so obviously, if you want to try and keep the line as far away from you and the body as you can, because obviously this entanglement can, can happen to you, but it can also happen to your buddy. Uh, and then during the dive, so you keep it taut but comfortable. 
so it's not super tight um it's got like a, a little bit of slack if there was a current if there was a wave uh, and it doesn't just yank you up out of the water and then you can adjust for depth and lock it off so if you're on a flat seabed for example you know you can, you can lock it off so you don't have to play about with it you just stuck it the same uh, depth on the ascent just like descent you're really in and you're controlling the buoyancy so you reel it in in a way to try and prevent your entanglement so when you're reeling it in you've got to be careful because um, it can all get caught on like one side and tangle itself in the reel which is just a nightmare because then you have to unreel it all and then reel it back in again when you're on the surface um, which is time consuming so uh and then buoyancy again so it's pretty easy to forget when you're trying to concentrate on you know not trying to cock up the smb you'd forget to um, dump some air out of your um, dc and then you end up just shooting off so a few places when you would use them so you'd use it when the position of the divers needs to be known at all times so a few examples of this is drift dives so with drift dives, typically you don't stay at the same location as where you jump off the boat. Um, hence the name, drift dive. Uh, so with an SMB, the boat can then just follow your uh, marker boy and they'll always know where you are. Uh, again, when divers may travel some way from the entry point, so it's just surface cover, keeping an eye on where you're going. Uh, local regulations. Uh, so some places actually require you to use an SMB. Uh, and then if surface traffic is anticipated, so if you're near a harbor or like shipping routes, et cetera, um, use an, you use an SMB so then other boats can sort of see there's, there's divers around. So SMBs are not suitable if uh, you're diving wrecks. So at wrecks, there could be overhanging material, uh, metal, which could uh, cut the line or the line could get caught on. Uh, and then gullies below kelp and coral. So this is an entanglement hazard, obviously. You don't want the line getting entangled in the kelp. That's just going to be a nightmare to try and go, come up off and, and read it back in. Um, yeah. A few precautions. Sort of repeats what I've said. Avoiding a tang entanglement. So careful and controlled deployment, uh, remembering your diving positions. Um, so as you can see on the photo, uh, you don't, it doesn't have to be a one man job. You know, one person could hold the reel and the other person extending the line. So it's, it's away from both of you. And yeah, just being aware of the line at all times. Um, so yeah, you want to be able to release it as quickly as possible if there's a problem so it's better to let go of than just to hold on and try and you know save it um, they're relatively inexpensive so it's, the cost isn't really a problem uh, but if you are starting to get pulled up and your buoyancy starting to be affected just let go uh, and then yeah if possibility of separation use the smb as a buddy line um, so just grab onto the line uh, so you don't lose each other. Um, and yeah. Um, so yeah, on a drift dive, when you're drifting along, if one person's going quicker than the other, you just grab the line, then you're not going to lose each other. And also, again, with reduced visibility, if you can't see very far, just grab something that attaches you both. So a DSMB, so the D is uh, delayed. So this is because you're obviously inflating it underwater. Um, so it's a marker buoy which can be inflated the water. So you get sent to the surface to mark the position of the divers. This is typically the end of the dive when you start your ascent. It's a sausage-shaped sausage visibility and long range, as you can see in the picture. Uh, and they're about one meters long with about 20 to 25 kg buoyancy. So the same reasoning before. So you can't tug it underneath. Then for deployment, again, you just have a connecting line and reel uh, to your inflatable DSMB. 
when would you use a DSMB? So you use it um, when a conventional SMB isn't appropriate. So that's again, when it can snag during a dive. So that's sort of the wrecks and gullies what I mentioned. Uh, where there's well-defined sites marked by shot lines. Um, so if you've got a shot line going down to the dive site, then you don't need to carry around an SMB with you, um, especially because then the lines could get tangled in each other and just make a mess. And then when a sense from sheltered sites into a current, um, so pretty much just when a shot line is difficult or uncomfortable to use, um, so like when slack water window is missed, for example. Uh, and then when you wouldn't use a DSMB. So to, yeah, when you need to know the diver's position uh, at all times, like I mentioned in the DSMB, if you're doing drift dives, there's no use you dropping down and then losing you and then popping up a, a boy. Um, chances are they're not going to be able to, to find you. Then also in areas of significant uh, surface traffic, but like I mentioned, it repeats itself quite a lot. So types of DSMBs, so you can get an open-ended DSMB, uh, which as the name suggests, the bottom's open. Uh, it's quite straightforward. There you go, open lower end. Uh, so the advantages to this is it's really simple construction which means it's much cheaper than uh, the other types. And it's also very compact. Uh, you can pack it down really small and fit it in pockets, for example. Uh, but then the disadvantages, so manual inflation. So we'll talk, I'll talk a little bit about inflation in a, in a, little, uh, in a few more slides. Um, but yeah, manual inflation, and then they don't hold their, hold their air well at the surface. So because it's open-ended, if it's really choppy on the surface, you know, the buoy could be flapping about and you could lose the air what's actually in it. Uh, so that's why most times we use a self-sealing DSMB, which is a, it's an open lower end, but it has a valve in it, uh, a non-return valve. So when air goes in, it doesn't come back out. Uh, and then it also includes an overpressure relief valve. So this is pretty much the exact same to your BCs and uh, they have them in dry suits as well. So if the pressure gets too much, then it just automatically just dumps air out of it to avoid it going pop. Uh, and then, yeah, there is a non-return valve. So the advantages to this, again, it's a really simple construction. Uh, this it literally just includes a, a valve in it. Uh, and again, it's compact. The disadvantages are, again, it's a manual inflation DSMB, uh, which isn't a problem. That's, that's how we teach you, but the um, easiest way is a self-inflating DSMB. So this is, again, pretty much the same as a self-sealing, but this time it includes a, uh, a small gas cylinder. So like the cylinders what we breathe off of, you can attach it to the DSMB uh, and it automatically releases the air into it. Uh, so yeah, there's the inflation cylinder. So the obvious advantage is they are the simplest to, uh, to deploy. We're not faffing around with our regs, trying to fill them up or trying to orally inflate them. Uh, and they are fully inflated when reaching the surface. Uh, you know, there's no room for error. You, you, you're just attaching the cylinder. It's, it is quite straightforward. Then the disadvantages are, because of this gas cylinder, they are uh, least compact. They're harder to sort of attach to your gear. Um, uh, and then they are the most expensive because uh, it's, it's a fancy sort of DSMB. So methods of deployment. Uh, so a secured deployment. So if there's something on the bottom, like a wreck, like uh, just any sort of heavy object will won't float up with you uh, you can attach the dsmb to it to uh, that way it doesn't affect your buoyancy um, and when you're when you're inflating it obviously the deeper we go uh, the more pressure that we sort of have on our body um, 
and so the air will expand as the DSMB rises, similarly to us. So you don't actually have to fill the, the DSMB like full because um, that air will expand when it goes up. Um, and yeah, free deployment. Uh, so this is most likely what you guys will do most of the time. Um, so you just hold it in one hand and then use your other hand uh, to inflate it. We're usually with the octopus or if you're with a buddy, then you know this can be done in a pair to make it a bit easier. The only downside to a free deployment is uh, it does impact your buoyancy. So because you're holding an extra pocket of air, when you start to inflate it, it will try and pull you up with it. So there is a bit of sort of a skill to it to try and um, you know control your buoyancy while inflating it. So the use and precautions of a DSMB. So before diving with any DSMB, you want to make sure that the reel is neatly coiled, so you don't so you're not going to get any jams when you're trying to deploy it underwater. Um, on one of the trips we went to, I took a DSMB down, uh, and it was one of the training ones, which had a zip tie to shut it, uh, which was very helpful. So we probably should have checked that before we went diving. Um, live and learn. Uh, and then you also want to stow it neatly to avoid snagging. So there's lots of like places where you can store them up. You can put them in pockets if if they're compact enough. Um, yeah, they they shouldn't really be dangling off your gear, but then they need to be easily accessible, um, but also secure. You don't want to go down and it just detaches and floats off, because uh, that's no use to no use to anyone. Um, so then, yeah, deploying when you're deploying the SMB, the SMB, make sure it's not fastened to you. So again, this is. Uh, to do with your buoyancy, if it's going to affect your buoyancy, it's it's much better just to let go of it and just let it go um, instead of it just dragging you up to the surface. Uh, so yeah, self-inflating DSMB by far the easiest. You know, you're not having to uh, use like your octopus, for example. Um, but you can get orally inflated DSMBs as well, which doesn't really touch on the slides. But oral inflate, you just take out your reg and just blow into like a little tube. Uh, and because of the air, what's in your lungs, it's just like a like an air transfer rather than sort of more air. Um, so it doesn't actually affect your buoyancy either. Uh, so that's also another another uh, SMB uh, deployment. Um, so yeah, if it's an open ending. Uh, you use your alternate supply. We don't use our main reg for obvious, obvious reasons. Don't breathe. Uh, and then, yeah, it's simpler if one diver can hold the reel and then another diver inflates it because um, then it's not just a faff for, for one person. And when we're starting to inflate them, so we do an initial small inflate. So that's to get the DSMB straight. It's so like in the picture, it's straight up. Because um, if you're trying to fill it, it can get sort of tangled in itself, and then it just cocks the whole thing up. So uh, use some precautions. A few more of them. So yeah, buoyancy control, already sort of mentioned. Um, so don't overinflate the DSMB because air does rise on ascent. Uh, uh, air does expand on ascent. On ascent, sorry. Um, so you don't have to fill it completely at like 20 meters down. Uh, and then if you're deploying it mid water, you want to inflate it below the deeper stop. So that's sort of your your safety margin. So it, in case of an error, if you if it does sort of like pull you up and tug you up and affect your buoyancy, uh, you know, you've got that sort of safety margin so you don't violate your your deco stop. Uh, yeah, keep your hands of the spinning reel. You know, you don't want to get your finger caught in it when it's zipping up to the surface. Um, then, yeah, check it has actually reached the surface. So um, don't lock the DSMB as soon as the line sort of slacks in the water. So you feel it sort of 
and you can see the reel not like extending out as quick as well. Um, it could the DSMB could um, have an unpredictable surfacing pattern, so it could go wonky. Um, then it's not actually reached the surface when you think it has, so you lock it and then it tugs you up. Um, so yeah, just don't lock it as soon as the line slacks, basically. Uh, so yeah, on ascent, keep the line under tension. So we're reeling it in while we're ascending. So we've not got loads of excess line just hanging about and ready to sort of entangle on itself and in you. Uh, and then, yeah, so in case of diver separation, so each diver must carry a DSMB. So now your sports divers should be carrying a DSMB each dive. Um, I know typically we, we kind of don't, it's sort of one per buddy group. Um, uh, but yeah, by the books, we should be. Uh, and then each diver should be able to deploy it unassisted. So I mentioned you could do it as a pair, it is easier, but you do also need to be able to do it by yourself is you know diver, diver separation does happen buddy separation does happen and of course practice 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 so you, you're not going to pick up dsmb straight away they are quite a difficult thing to, to sort of pick up uh and you probably realize it's, it looks simpler than it is you probably realize that when you go for uh, your open water sessions at stony cove uh, sometime in the coming months um, yeah, just just keep on um, keep on practicing, and you'll uh, get it. Uh, so yeah, so um, so so you can actually use DSMBs as a surface signal. Uh, obviously, if you're gonna, you got to agree the signals before diving. You can't just send up random DSMBs and expect people to know them. Um, so all shapes of DSMBs can be used. Um, so if you're going to use just a single DSMB, it's recommended that the color is red or orange. Uh, and it's also like you should sort of label it as well, because you there's not that many sort of different types. You know, they're all sort of this big inflatable tubes. So it is sometimes pretty good to uh, clearly label who's who so the surface cover can notice. Uh, so red DSMBs are generally OK. Uh, there you go, you can see in the picture. Uh, so if someone pops up a yellow DSMB, it suggests that there could be a bit of a problem um, down under the water. Uh, so some sort of emergency. Um, and if you do a red followed by a yellow, you know, if you've, if you've agreed this, then it can mean uh, that more gas is required at your deco. Uh, so if you've guzzled through your deco gas, um, then, you know, you can send a message up and get them to bring you some more some more gas down. Um, yeah. So red, then yellow. So that's the end of the first section. So we'd go through, we'll just do a quick quiz. Uh, so question one, so what does a shot line consist of? You want to put messages in the chat or speak up? Little. Yeah, so yeah, boy line. Yeah, so you've hit the nail on the head there. Pretty simple stuff, but yeah, line and a weight to attach it to. And then you boy on the surface to indicate your uh, diver position. Back to the power point. So yeah, boy, line, weight slash sinker. Uh, question number two. So what methods do you use to deploy a DSMB? There was two different methods. Take a few seconds. So, 
So yeah, we've got a self. So you can do it um, sort of free. Uh, we call it free deployment. If you've got nothing, sort of attach it to. Someone's just typing. Still free. There we go. So yeah, secure deployment. So if you're near any sort of heavy object, which is what is not just going to carry up to the surface, you know, you can attach it to that. It won't affect your buoyancy. Uh, and then free deployment. Um, okay, so that's it for the first half. James is now going to take over. Let's have a go. Um, allow. That should work. Can I get the... Got it? Can I skip through? I think I have it. Um, is this working? It's not flicking through on my screen. No. It might just be easier if you stop presenting because I've got the slides up, so I can just do Yeah, that's thing. fine. Okay. Uh, okay, there we go. Can people see that? I'm guessing you guys can see this. Yeah, I can see it. Cool. There's a PowerPoint starting. There we go. I'll do the quiz again. I don't need to do that again. So there's also some things we have that are additional surface aids. So they're normally dive flags. Um, they can be various different colors and they mean various different things. Um, you learn from your ocean diver, the diver below, um, or like the international diver flag, um, which is the blue and white one. Um, we've got EPIRBs. Um, they're basically like a little electronic device that sends out um, like a distress signal, I think, well, not distress signal, but like tells you where you are. Um, that's what they look like coming in a little box. Take the lid off. Right, so little lights that flash. You can use those on the surface. We use them normally to see uh, each other, so you can see each other more easily. Um, and sometimes you get people who have strobe light, strobe lights actually on their cylinders or on their person. So you can see them better underwater, like at Stony, for example, where there is no vis. Um, but they're normally slower strobes, so the fast strobes and kind of more visible ones are used on the surface. There they are. Flares, so the surface flares, so you send them up. So if you're like in distress, I guess you can send them off, and we'll know where you are. And if the helicopter's landing, I guess if someone you're getting airlifted out of the water. You really messed up that bad. Um, whistles, they often get ones clipped onto the BC or just so you can alert people to where you are or get people's attention. You know, um, mirrors, you don't see them very often, but you can use them to kind of reflect light onto people so they kind of see your mirror like flash uh, shining in the water. So, which you don't see very often, but yeah, they're quite useful. Um, we're also going to look at distance lines. Um, so a distance line is just a temporary bottom line that ensures return to dating point. So what that means is it's tied off at a certain point um, and then reel it out kind of wherever you go. To in places that has low visibility or you have to return to your shot line for some reason um like the boats can be waiting there for you if the vis is poor and you not you might lose each other or you might lose your way back to the shot lines you can't see it if the site is reasonably very, very far it's quite good to have one um again it can be used as a guideline for other divers so that's often used in caves um not that you'll be doing cave diving or any of us will be doing cave diving really um or sometimes when you go to a dive site, um, it might be used to map out the dive site. So where one of the 
the ones that we could have gone to in the final lines didn't actually go to it, but they have uh, a line between various um, gun, like ship, old ship guns underwater, so that you can follow the line and find where the next gun's going to be quite easily. Um, so you have different types of distance lines. Um, you can use an S and B line in real. Um, they all don't have ones that are quite, they can be quite good. Um, however, the rear and the line are often buoyant. So obviously when you launch, when you send off a DSMB or have a hold an SMB, you want the line to go up to the surface so it is buoyant, which that might not be good because you can get uh, tangled up in it. Um, and if it's kind of like floating off the ground or you, yeah, it can be annoying. Um, you can get dedicated distance lines as well, which are denser they're, or they're heavier, so they sink, um, so they don't float up. So then, yeah, it's less chance of being entangled. However, they often might be hard to see, for example, um, whereas uh, one that's floating, you can see it because it's sticking up off the ground. Um, but they're heavier to carry around. So if you've got, say, 50 metres of line on it, um, it actually have quite a bit of weight, which isn't necessarily a huge problem when you're diving, because obviously you can't feel the weight that much, um, but they can kind of get in the way. So the main use here, um, they've been tied off with a non-sliding attachment to the shot line. And then the, as the divers have swum along, they've kind of moved along with the uh, distance line. And every time they've changed direction, uh, they've tied it off to keep um, You'll learn how the best way is to tie them off when you go into open water. Um, but it's it's not that difficult. Um, it's just so that where it doesn't slide. If the divers hadn't tied it off, it would be a straight line back to the um, shot line, which often isn't what you want. You want to be going back the way you came. Um, and in the, the, the you want attention if the line gets um, too saggy, uh, it kind of can get caught on things more easily. Um, it can get trapped. It can. It's basically not. A good idea to have it. Um, when you're using lines, however, there is safety hazards, and you can get tangled up in them. Or so you, you, that's the the only real um, thing to worry about. So you often carry a sharp knife or a net cutter or scissors with you. Um, they they just allow you to cut the line off if you get tangled or. It gets tangled around. Um, always keep the line taut so that you then reduce the ch chance of getting uh, tangled up in it. Tangled up in a tight. Um, deploy at arm's length to so keep it kind of an arm's length away from your body uh, so you don't get tangled up in it. And avoid swimming uh, too close to it. Um, if you go a bit too close, then yeah, you get tangled. Yeah, avoid other lines as well. So you can get your own line tangled up with someone else's, which is never a good thing because you don't then just put yourself at risk. You put the other divers at risk. Um, so keep away from them if you can. Um, and don't use the same reel for both your distance and your DSMB lines. So if you're going to use, when you're going to be using a DSMB at the end of the dive, you don't want that to be the same line that you've used to dis uh, mark your distance out. Um, I'm not, I think it's mainly because there's a chance that you damage the line when you're kind of swimming along and using it as a distance line. So when you then send it up as your DSMB, it's kind of, it's more a risk of breaking. So yeah, if you're going to have a distance line, then use it a separate one to your DSMB. And if the gas time or if your dive time is cut short for some reason, you need to come up, you often just cut the line. Um, from where you are rather than going back and untying it and then you would ascend using your DSMB. Um, so that's another reason why you wouldn't use the same uh, reel for both because you might then need it. So the compass, this is a very important, well, a useful uh, piece of kit when you're diving. Um, use it to navigate to and from a specific, specific area just like you would with any compass on the surface really. It's kind of used for the same route. Um, so there's a picture of one, I think there might be one or two in the kit store, but we can't find them at the moment, uh, but I'm sure we'll dig them out for when you're doing your practice with them. Um, 
So you can see here, this one's got a standard magnetic north needle, um, points north, and it's transparent and filled with oil, so that it kind of spins more easily. Um, you've got a rotating bezel around the outside so that you can um, change the bearings that you're going on. Uh, direction of travel line, so that's often either in Side the compass itself or it's just on the edge of like, like it is here so with that you always want to point the direction of travel line um towards where you're planning to go and don't worry just so you can get your bearings and make sure you go, you go on the bearing you need the cursors here so that if you can see on this one here it's a two kind of bit sticking out what you will do when you're going towards the point you want is you line up the north needle um, between those two just to make it a bit more accurate and more, more easy to see um, where your cursor is on the way you're going. Um, it's just you know, just a way to make it easier. And then you've got the lubber lines, um, which is the lines that you, they're just like the direction of travel line. Um, your body. You set the on the surface either um, by looking, um, for, for example, or if you go to Stony uh, or go to a dive site that other people know, the bearings from certain landmarks might. You can use so for Stony, for example, all of the well, most of the big bearings are on the stone map. You set the bearing using the rotating bezel and cursor. Uh, so you line up the cursor with the north seeking needle, and then your bezel will read out the bearing that you need. And then when you're underwater, you line it up with the cursor basically as you did on the surface. Um, and then you follow it, follow the direction of travel line. Um, uh, if you know kind of the distance that you're going to be going, um, you can do time and you can do time or count your fin strokes. So you, once you've done more. X number of fin strokes, you're going to go a certain distance. Um, so you can use that, keep that in your mind, so you know where, where whether you're coming up on the right um, object soon or not. And then for a reciprocal bearing on your journey back, you just take the reverse. So it's 180 degrees different. So say you've gone out on a 30 degree bearing to to see something, then to get back to where you were before you want to go on a 210 degree bearing. Um, so that's just something to remember for kind of finding your way back. Um, and then, yeah, you can use a, if you're going to be coming up but kind of mid water, for example, underneath a boat or something, um, it can be good to time or do the fin strokes again back to the starting point. When you're using it, make sure you hold it level um, and you've got the arrows lined up with the direction of your body. And currents, you need to keep thinning. Um, at so sure you do go the way you bear in mind, because if you're going in a current, for example, you'll be pushed down, um, even though your bearing says something else. You'll be going to a different point. Causes of error, magnetic influences. So it could be various things, um, wrecks or other ferrous material. Um, so, for example, in Stony Cove is the APC. I don't know if many of you have seen it. Um, it's basically a big armoured personnel carrier, which is just solid metal, and it has quite a tendency to completely mess up your compass. So. When you go when you go near printing at the APC rather than north. Um, so if you know something that's going to be around, just make sure you keep it in mind um, so that it doesn't. Because when you get near it, for example, you're going to your compass is useless basically. And disbelief. So if you believe that the that way that you're not, that's a uh, source of error. 
Um, precautions, just keep an eye on the compass, basically. So if you are looking down and then you look up to look at some wreck or see some fish as you're swimming, uh, swimming along, you might suddenly go off the bearing that you're meant to be on. And then by the time you get back on the bearing, even though you're, you might get on it quite quickly, that small time where you were on the wrong bearing means the point that you've then got to after um, kind of going the wrong way, uh, it then is then a different bearing to the point that you're supposed to be going to. So by going on the bearing that you're using already, you're not necessarily going to get to the place you want to get to. So it's you kind of need to keep an eye on it and make sure you're following it all the time. Um, so diamond torches, these are pretty bloody important at Stony. Um, it gets pretty dark and pretty crap of it is. So it illuminates the dive area so you can see what, you, what actually is around you. Um, you can also use them to kind of point out things. Um, so if, for example, you see a fish or a certain fish or something in a wreck that you want to point out, um, you kind of point like point it at it and your dive buddy will hopefully see it. They're essential for night dives, um, which Stony do do. So if you sign up for one of those, if you want to try it, try it out. But make sure you have a torch first. There are different types of torches. They're all pressure rated. They're all kind of capable of go bust. Uh, they can either have a batteries that you have to buy and let last a while, and then you have to buy new ones, or they are rechargeable. So you can plug it into a, re a charging cradle or something uh, um, to get it back. Torch care, you want to look after it. So if the bulb goes, you might need to replace the bulb, or if the O-rings that seal it when you take the battery in and out. Um, if one of those starts showing wear, then you might want to replace them. Um, just kind of your standard care, and then you wash them off every dive, especially if you've been in salt water. Um, you'll know salt water is an absolute nightmare for your kit. So torch and safety, recharging batteries, yeah, just don't overcharge them because they can worse the batteries or they can blow up if you take them up. Um, and you can use them to light your diver's position. Um, so you can, people can, not only can you see things around you, but people can see where you are. So that's quite, and you can use them for communicating or signaling. Um, so for example, my torch, I've got, um, I'm ever in distress or something's happened to me, I can turn it onto the strobe and it's flashing really quickly for really kind of who's near me can see and will know that I'm in distress and they can come over and try and help me. So and then you can use them because of that as well, you don't really want to flick it around too quickly. So if you're moving it from site to site quickly, people might think that it's flashing when it's not. Um it should be smooth with your moving around your torch. Uh, here we go. It's quiz number two. Um, I think there should be more of the stuff we've covered. So, what is a distance? Um, can I put that in the chat? It is a temporary bottom line. Return to a fixed data so you can find your way back to where you've been. Um, when using lines, uh, the portions do you take when you're using lines? You carry a sharp knife, uh, a net cutter. You always keep the line. You deploy the arm at arm's length so you don't get tangled up in it. And then you avoid swimming. And use the same for both your distance and the SMB lines. Um, in case you need to use your DSMB again uh, while your distance line is fully up. You can then, yeah. So if you cut your, if you dive to Cut short, you can cut them. Um, 
So that is everything. So we'll do a quick summary of what we've gone over. Um, we've gone over kind of the equipment that you'll be using to extend your range of diving and we've discussed the portions of the set equipment. We've looked at shot lines, SMBs and DSMBs, additional surface aids, uh, flaps and whistles and stuff, uh, distance lines, how to use them, compasses. With compasses, you will just kind of you you would practice with them when you do your open water, um, so don't worry too much about them. Um, if you're fancy and you get on the you get a computer that has a compass built in, which some a lot of them do. Obviously, don't need often don't need a compass, but it's good to have uh, dive torches. People carry torches, um, so they're they're pretty useful. But that is everything um, that we're covering tonight. So, is there any questions from anyone? Or Tom, have you got anything to add? Um, just to reiterate the easy fundraising that I mentioned at the start, you know, it's a really big help to the club is raising sort of free finance. You know, we're not paying anything. It's just our normal everyday spending. So again, yeah, just keep an eye out on the Facebook and if you guys could, could sign up, then it would be a massive help to the club. That's about it, I think. So I guess we'll probably see you guys next week. Um, I think I don't know what's going on with Open. Um, we'll try and get that organised eventually for you guys. Uh, but there will be information posted about it. Probably not this week because I don't think there's much been organised. Um, but just keep an eye out if anything does pop up. Right, cool. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Cheers, guys. Hey, Tom. Yeah. Have you booked on to the... Uh, oh, that looks up now. On the sport page. No, I've just remembered to do I'm doing it now. <laughs> Book. Yes. Successful. Such a pain to do it. I know, um, be, kind of a given that we're going to be there. Signed our life. Yeah. <laughs> um, is Mike still there? Or is he gone? Mike's still there. Stop sharing the screen now. I'm not going yeah, to. Yeah, uh, the uh, is still there. Um, yeah, I'm going to like grab some food <laughs> and then. Probably eat it on the way, so I'll probably go there. I'll come down straight away now because we've got some stuff to sort out. Uh, so yeah, I'll... I, I feel like I feel like, I feel like I, Sorry, what was that? Half, I feel like I cocked up my half a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, I lost my groove like halfway through. I was like, oh god, <clears throat> nah, it was fine. Um, yeah, yeah, so Mike, say so like. I'll, I'll try and get it as early as I can. Probably gonna be more like quarter past, twenty past. Um, it'll be before half past either way. Um, yeah, we've literally done no. Cool. All right. I'll see you in about twenty minutes. Yeah. I'll see you in a bit, guys. See you, Tommy. See you later. Farewell.